I want to welcome again Marcus Sheridan, author, speaker, thought leader, and expert in sales and marketing, to talk about something that is maybe on the a little bit on the com- uncomfortable side and maybe a little bit on the taboo side, but I think a discussion that needs to be had and, and I think will be an interesting one. So, Marcus, I want to first off start with the question that I think is on people's minds, which is how should my marketing budget change? in the age of AI. So are you seeing, are you hearing business leaders ask this? Is this a topic that feels germane to businesses right now? Right, so you've got all this that's happening with AI right now. You're seeing a billion, and I, and I, that's not an exaggeration, tools uh, that you could be using and therefore could be spending money on. And you're asking yourself, uh, should I be using these tools? Which ones sh- uh, should I have right now? Which all this is a challenge. And that's one thing, of course, we're helping our clients with Uh, at impact, I can tell you this, before you spend a bunch of money on tools, you got to get down to the uh, uh, foundational elements. Just like if you do, they ask you answer, you have to agree first that, hey, as an organization, we want to become the most trusted voice in our space. If you're going to start to dabble with AI, you have to say, as an organization, AI is going to dramatically affect us as we're going forward. It has to be a priority, therefore, for us. We need to learn it. We need to embrace it. Everybody has to agree to this. If you got a bunch of resistors, because they're like, ah, you know, AI, your C- if your CFO is pushing back because he or she is ignorant about the future of AI, well, then budget just gets completely screwed up when you're having the conversation. So make sure everybody's got that vision. That's why one of the things that we've been doing is more trainings on this very subject to organizations where we're going to go where we go in and we give them the vision of AI and we get everyone including that CFO or whomever that person is sales manager on board catching the vision now once you do that let's talk a little bit about budget because when we say budget here you don't want to first think how much am i spending on tools you actually want to start with how much time should i be giving budget for my team to start to practice experiment with and use AI. This is absolutely fundamental. You've got to get to the place right now where you're telling your team you should be spending hypothetically 30 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever, out of your block per day experimenting with AI. Figure out ways to become more efficient in your particular position with the particular duties that you have. If an employee right now, a team member, isn't trying to leverage AI at all, to me, they are the literal ostrich with their head in the sand, and they're refusing to accept reality. You're not going to be punished, I can tell you right now, for becoming more efficient and for learning new skills, faster skills, being able to do certain things. I would celebrate any team member like that, any employee like that right now. So, First part of budget is how much time should we be given our team to play in the AI sandbox? The second is, now that they have that time, they can start to experiment with freemium tools. They see what's working, what's not, what's helping, what's not, and they can have proof of concept of, hey, look, I use this tool. Here's how it directly affects my productivity. Here's the ROI that I see for myself for the company. Here's how much it costs. And so what you want to do is give your team essentially a roadmap of, okay, your mission is to find the most productive tools, to bring them back to the team, to teach them to the team, and if we really need them, and if they're a pay tool, present to us how much it would cost and what would be the financial benefit to the company by using this tool. Now, all of a sudden, it gets much easier to justify spend. I do anticipate as we go forward, if someone is spending, there's many companies that have never spent money on AI before now. The first spend that you have is using the best version of ChatGPT. Everybody should have that in the budget. And then you're choosing the tools based on actual experiences from team members and you continue to iterate 
because the reality is there is a lot out there. And so I'd be very careful right now as you're choosing AI tools, stay away from long-term commitments because something new could pop up tomorrow that's dramatically better than that piece of software that you're seeing over here and you don't want to have a year's paid in advance and now you can't get out of a contract. So you want to be very, very cognizant and aware of that. I, I believe we're all going to be spending a lot more money on AI in the future, but we're going to see it as our CRM. We're going to see it as our marketing automation, right? And this is why you're seeing uh, companies like Salesforce and HubSpot lean so much into integrating AI into their platforms because they know that's where this is headed. And so as we think about that, so we, we have to say, okay, what are the existing tools we have right now? Could something replace it? Could something be more efficient than it? What are they coming up with? Talk to your vendors, your current software providers. Find out what they have as a, a, a plan in terms of integrating AI and what that time frame looks like. Because in many ways, it's the wild, wild west of AI tech out there. And you don't want to be one of the laggards that's just using a legacy system or product when all the peers in your industry are using something that potentially even costs less and is helping them to be 10x more productive. Yeah, great point. So a few things that I heard that I think are, are really important that I'd love to reiterate. One is a reminder that AI, in whatever form we're talking about, is a tool. Just like any tool, it can help you, but it won't solve. You know, we, we always say HubSpot is not a marketing strategy. Uh, AI is not a marketing strategy. These are tools that can help you. So remember that you need the tool. You also need the blueprint to put the tool to work. Uh, you need the, the, the hands to put the tool to work. Um, second, I love the fact that most of these, most standalone AI tools that we're talking about are, are a pittance. They're not expensive. You know, ChatGPT4 is $20 a month. This is, these are pretty, we're not talking about the equivalent of HubSpot or the Adobe Creative Suite that's going to cost hundreds, hundreds of dollars a month. These are typically small spends, but the idea, the, the caveat there is if you're working with 15 or 20 different small tools, that's going to add up over time. And so what I think the future is, and this is what, what you said, but just to, to put a point on it, is AI integrating into platforms that we know well already, integrating into the Google suite, integrating into HubSpot and Salesforce, integrating into Adobe, integrating into those sorts of programs. And as you said, it's a wild west with a billion tools out there. There's gonna be a lot of, uh, of competition, a lot of acquisition, a lot of cannibalizing as these tools fight for supremacy and try to build a following. 100%. We're, it's, it is going to be interesting times. Keep in mind, these tools won't always be cheap, though. Right now, because we've got a lot of, of just investor money uh, circulating in the marketplace, everybody can uh, be irresponsible, fiscally speaking, and uh, can hemorrhage money while it's investor money. But eventually, it won't be like that, and so you're going you're gonna to see a spike in the cost of AI tools won't be this year, right? But it's going to happen in the future. So just be cognizant of that as well. 100%. And from all reports that I've seen, OpenAI, which got a $10 billion investment from Microsoft, that's what's keeping that company afloat. That company is not solvent. It's losing, I heard, or what I've read is $700,000 a day or that's what it costs to operate, it's losing money, how it gets monetized in a way that feels long-term sustainable for that company is, is still an open question as this market comes into maturity and, and takes shape. So all of that said, Marcus, if you had a budget, if you were a small business owner and, and setting a marketing budget, I'm hearing what you said that, that making time for experimentation, making time for exploration is a really important first step. Are you seeing teams, or I'll say it this way, we're often hearing that AI is a, is a, is a multiplier. It's gonna help people become more efficient. It's not gonna replace people, it's gonna help them become more efficient, but it could make a team of five turn into a team of three or a team of 10 turning into a team of seven. Are you seeing teams 
shrink because they have this multiplier in their back pocket? Well, we're not seeing that as much yet simply because they are not, many of them haven't learned how to use the tools well yet. Some are, but what we've seen more of is you're actually seeing more uh, cuts where they're saying we're just going to have AI do it, but they don't really know how yet because they haven't they haven't learned the thing. So that's a bit ridiculous. You're seeing you're certainly seeing that in the marketplace. But you know we're in this like beautiful age of major major experimentation right now because we're on the front end, and everybody's got to get extremely comfortable experimenting. Uh, if you're not comfortable experimenting with AI, you, I promise, I mean, I'm just really serious, you will get left behind, especially as a marketer, uh, as a business leader. You've got to create that culture uh, within your organization. As to how much you should you should spend, well, I don't want to give an exact number, but I will say if you follow the process that I mentioned earlier, if you take the time to make sure that you experiment with the tool, that you prove the, uh, that, that you prove the ROI, especially with the freemium version or the free trial version, which most have. And you can therefore say, here's the actual returns we would get from a monetary perspective. Now it becomes much, much easier to justify that spent. And so that's the route that you should take. But what you don't want to do is don't just go start looking at AI tools and throwing money at them because that's very overwhelming. And there's so many that do similar things that there's a good chance you're going to make some mistakes. So again, make sure whatever you do, don't sign any long-term contracts with AI companies right now. Yeah, great point. As we on the marketing team here at Impact, we were ready to go all in on a certain tool for video production. We, I know, had a few sales calls with them, didn't sign a long-term contract, but signed for a month or two. And ultimately found it just didn't work for us. We found a few others that we think work better and they can be that multiplier that we're talking about. But I, I think, as you said, Marcus, this is a good time to be playing the field. Uh, try something out. And if it doesn't work, I guarantee you there are a hundred other possibilities that might work, work better for you. They might feel similar. There might be incremental improvement. And then each tool, you, you see a tool today that's not going to be the same tool in three months and six months. That's going to improve drastically as well. So don't be afraid to go back and try something again if you've you know, given it some time and you want to check it out another time. Marcus, as, as a final word, as, you, as we look ahead to 2024 and companies are planning their budgets and whenever you know, economy goes up, economy goes down, marketing is an easy thing to, to subtract from. It's an easy place to, to cut costs. What's your advice to those companies planning budgets for 2024, planning marketing budgets for the year ahead? I would say that the time is now to learn how to create your own content in-house. If your budget is purely based around paid advertising, that's probably going to get you in a lot of trouble uh, in the near future. And so as you're considering budget, I would say, ask yourselves right now, can we do things like produce our own video in-house? You're going to have to do that to be great on social media. You're going to have to do that to show those videos that are so necessary on your website. You're going to have to have those videos for your sales process as we go forward. Those are the types of questions that you should be asking yourself. You've got to prepare now, prepare now for what's happening with the way the world is changing, what generative search is doing, what that means for the traditional forms of digital marketing that we've been doing. And we've got to evolve that. And if you don't evolve that, you could be in a lot of trouble. And yes, some industries will take longer to evolve than others, but it's coming. It's coming for you. It's coming for me. And also, one last thing I'll say about it is don't allow your personal opinions to screw up smart business decisions. A lot of people are going to say, it's not my thing. It doesn't matter what your thing is. What matters is, what is the marketplace telling us? And the marketplace is telling us there's a big shift happening. We're going towards AI. We're going towards more video. Social is going to be more important. And you still better answer those dang questions, worries, fears, issues, concerns on your website. <laughs> That's what the marketplace is telling us.
hundred percent. And and ultimately, AI, I think, as a as a term, can be intimidating to some. So it's easy just to think about it as tech. And if you are that business that is has not taken content production in house in the past, the new technology that's coming out can make a single savvy marketer get so much done for your business, produce tons of different kinds of content on social, on YouTube, on your website, et cetera. It is a multiplier. And think of it that way. Think of it as, as a tool that can help a good marketer do the work of, of, of a few. So you don't have to think about, oh, I need to hire this huge team, a video person, a writer, a social media person. Suddenly we have tools that can help a single person do more. And that's that's an exciting thing, especially for the micro and small business that- Very exciting to, time to, for small businesses. Yes. Once again, David has a chance to be Goliath. You just can't think slowly and you can't get tripped up over that red tape like the enterprise companies certainly will be. David beats Goliath when he doesn't play by Goliath's rules. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Marcus. As always, love to hear your perspective. Mm-hmm.